Tonight, concerns raised about the safety of staff at a York Peninsula hospital. And the Upper Spencer Gulf urged to brace for a summer scorcher. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. First tonight, calls are growing for better security at regional hospitals following an incident at Wallaroo last week. The Nursing and Midwifery Federation say staff feel unsafe at work due to the terrifying events that took place. A scary situation for the staff at Wallaroo Hospital. A man has been arrested after he allegedly smashed 10 glass panels at the entrance of the hospital and two windows of an ambulance. It has been a terrifying experience for our members and they are deeply disturbed by it. And the management at the time acted to their credit and came to support our members. The ANMF said it was lucky police were already on the scene dealing with a separate incident of aggressive behaviour. They were the only two on patrol though. With State Secretary believing the outcome could have been very different if they weren't in the area. We have been advocating for many years for restraint trained security guards in our regional hospitals and regional centres. Uh, we have had some success. Wyala, Port Augusta and Port Lincoln now have security guards 24-7. However, regional hospitals like Wallaroo still have to rely on police and hope they respond on time. And it's not only the staff that are at risk. People have a right and an expectation to a safe environment, particularly when they're going to a hospital or healthcare setting. The Federation formally wrote to the Minister of Health and Wellbeing on Friday and asked for an urgent response by Thursday. Our news station has also reached out but have not received a response. Annabelle Francis, 7, Spencer Golf News. Police are tonight preparing a report for the coroner following the death of a man in Port Lincoln today. Emergency services were called to the marina at around 11am after he fell from a boat while involved in the Lincoln Week regatta. After being retrieved unconscious from the scene, paramedics worked on him, but the person in his 60s could not be revived. The Port Lincoln Yacht Club has also extended its condolences to the family and says it's offering support to its competitors and volunteers. Police say there are no suspicious circumstances. Extreme heat is sweeping across the Upper Spencer Gulf, with scorching temperatures expected for most of this week. The situation is being closely monitored by the Bureau of Meteorology and the CFS, as locals face a very difficult period. You'll need more than some sunscreen and a hat this week in Port Augusta. An extreme heat wave is set to have the area sweltering. Once our winds start to move a little bit more northeasterly, uh, we're going to start dragging that heat that's over the far north of the state back down over the southern parts uh, and we'll see that heat gradually increase through the, the middle and later part of the week. Temperatures in the area are expected to peak at a sizzling 44 degrees on Thursday and Friday before finally lowering to a relatively cool 32 degrees on Saturday. Nights will also be uncomfortable, remaining in the high 20s or even 30s. The hellish conditions prompting a warning about working outside. Just just find a way to stay cool through the situation. Don't take any risks. Don't, certainly don't go out in the, in the 45 degree sun and decide that you're going to build the brick wall out the back of the house on, on that particular day. The CFS is also on high alert with high fire danger ratings issued for the entire Spencer Gulf region as well as the North East Pastoral District and the West Coast. And we're not out of strife just yet with the Bureau predicting a sizzling autumn. The outlook for, for March and even into April is for an increased chance of above um, average temperatures. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Port Perry Police are looking to reunite owners of stolen property after arresting and charging a man over a series of break-ins last week. These items were recovered after officers conducted numerous property searches last Monday, following several reported break-ins at Port Perry West. The 28-year-old, also from Port Perry West, was charged with numerous offences, including serious criminal trespass, theft and unlawful possession. He was refused bail and later remanded in custody. Anyone who has any information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. 
Still to come tonight, a road safety upgrade coming to a piece of the Horrocks Highway. And the Flying Kangaroo taking applications for its regional grants program. Welcome back. The Broken Hill High School Hall has been renamed in honour of one of our most decorated nurses. Former and current students, as well as servicemen and women, joined together on Saturday to honour Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle, who grew up in the city. A historical day for Broken Hill High School. It's hall now a lasting tribute to the sole nursing survivor of the Banker Island Massacre. It shows that we do look after our traditions and our past students who have actually have um, really gone far and beyond. After their ship was sunk by an enemy aircraft, Lieutenant Colonel Bullwinkle, along with other nurses and soldiers, made their way to Banker Island. The Japanese invaded and killed the soldiers, with nurses then forced into the ocean and gunned them down from behind. Though she was struck with a bullet, she played dead and escaped before spending time in a POW camp. Her connection with Broken Hill is a strong one. She trained as a nurse in the city, also visiting the school numerous times when she returned to Australia. To be a war hero and she's always visited the school, I think that's what stands out, that she actually didn't ever forget the school and what the school meant to her. The school's principal happy with the turnout from locals. Yeah, it was excellent to see a number of community members come and visit, um, particularly you know some past students, those from the, the nursing profession. We had our local members and stuff available today, so it's been a, a great rollout for our school. Former student, now Army nurse, Lieutenant Naomi Thompson, said that it was an honour to take part. I think she learnt um, her foundations education-wise and then also nursing. Um, so it's incredibly special to be here and then naming the school hall after her I think is um, great. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. A COVID replacement program is taking place on the Horrocks Highway as part of a $4.1 million state and federal government funded project. The upgrades are being welcomed after a horror start to the year on South Australia's roads. Strengthening one of the region's most vital roads. Horrocks Highway is a major route for producers and tourists from Goula to the Mid-North, but its worsening condition has been a talking point for years. New state government investment has begun to improve safety for freight trains. Well, Wild Dog Creek has been one of the uh, bridges there. The culverts need to be upgraded because uh, the, the, actually the existing culverts are not uh, allowing the heavier vehicles to go uh, across on that one because of the restrictions and also the weight and also the width. The multi-million dollar upgrade set to improve travel times across the region. Mr Brock says it will also increase safety by reducing the likelihood of a crash occurring. It's going to be a little bit of inconvenience, a little bit while we, we do this thing as, uh, as part of the, the upgrades there. But uh, the uh, at the end of the day is we need to be able to get, get these vehicles up so that we can have a continuous run from Wilmington right through to uh, Gladstone for the grain, uh, grain areas in particular. Road safety is a hot topic in South Australia. The state has had a horror start to the year with 22 deaths already recorded. The minister says he is shocked and saddened by the soaring number of fatalities. He's urging drivers to be patient whenever travelling on regional roads and around work sites. Personally suffered from, personally years, years ago to a road accident from my late wife. Um, it's disappointing, it is disappointing. Um, there's been a lot of road works happening across all of regional South Australia, across all of the state. Annabelle Francis, 7, Spencer Golf News. The Qantas regional grants are open and Spencer Golf organisations are being encouraged to apply. Around $10 million in total is on offer this year, with the program flying again after a three-year hiatus due to the pandemic. Charities, community organisations and individuals are in line to receive cash grants, flights and marketing support from the national carrier. Applications will close in April. More information is available on their website. Dozens have gathered in Port Lincoln for a conference focusing on mental health. The Suicide Prevention Minister among those in attendance, as the region's services and support were discussed. Taking time to talk about important matters. 
At the Port Lincoln Hotel over the weekend, the team at Mentally Fit EP and their supporters shared stories, listened to speakers and played a few games, all in the name of mental health. The program was started by Kirsty Traeger, who struggled with mental illness and wanted to break the stigma in regional communities. Sadly, she's no longer with us, but her family and friends are using this event to honour her memory. She wanted to reach out to people and not let them suffer the way she did. She wanted to break down the stigma because when she was sick it was still a really hidden taboo subject and she felt very um, isolated and alone. With an emphasis on sharing stories, the overarching message about seeking help resonated with everyone. By sharing stories people know that they're not alone and there's also other ways that they can kind of deal with what they're going through. Using phrases like joy and grief can coexist and don't dot the T in can't, positivity flowed. So it's things like that, you know, knowing that the other side of something really tough can be, you know, bright again. Organisers say seeing people get together to discuss the importance of mental health shows a change in attitudes. It, it, it makes me want to cry in excitement and in tears that Kirsty's not here to see it, but it's everything she would have ever dreamed of. If you or someone you know is struggling, call Lifeline on 131114. Alison Hall, 7, Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. The circus comes to town in Wyala and we go around the region and check on the weekend's local cricket results. You're watching 7 Spencer Golf News. The circus has rolled into Wyala, with one of the country's best troops pitching their tent in the city this week. From the human cannonball to the globe of death, performers are promising a show for all ages. Edwin McCarroll spent a day with them and filed this report. This show, which has been labelled one of the best circuses in decades, has performed in Australia's major cities before travelling into the bush to delight regional audiences. Weber Bros Entertainment has pitched their big top in Wyala's Schultz Reserve, ready to deliver world-class tricks in a high-quality setting. With an international quality show, we wanted to present it in the best possible way, so we bought a tent for a mere million dollars. And this fancy tent is filled to the brim with acrobats, stuntmen and clowns when showtime rolls around. This is just the best of the best. Everything you want for a circus, it's all under one big top. Kirana Weber was born into the circus lifestyle, with her family operating the circus for seven generations. I do the silks, so I climb up uh, to the top of the tent and as I go up I do different tricks, twirls, and the last trick is just the uh, crowd pleaser, get the oohs and the ahs and all of that. People have got globes of death, yes, we've got a globe of death with four riders, not two, not three, this isn't any circus, this is the circus. It doesn't stop there. The show also takes to the skies with their heart-stopping human cannonball. Three, two, one, zero. Off the back of a successful opening weekend, the performers are excited to jump back on stage this Friday. The crowd was just phenomenal and we've had amazing feedback from the whole town. We've had people say that they're coming out from Port Lincoln to come and watch. Those keen to get in on the excitement are encouraged to come along to one of the five remaining shows this weekend. I've had a lot of fun here today. Who knows, I might just run away and join the circus. Well, let me just tell you, you wouldn't be the first one. If he's good enough, you can keep him. St Pat's organisers have begun saddling up for next month's big day. Today marked the official opening of their race office in Argent Street. St Pat's patron Steve Radford, event staffs and representatives from Foundation Broken Hill and Broken Hill Credit Union cut the ribbon to mark the occasion. There is now less than three weeks until the Silver City's biggest sporting and social event. Organisers say another big announcement about the race day will be made early next week. Turning to sport now, and the last round of the Barrier District Cricket League saw North Broken Hill take out the minor premiership. The Bulldogs showed no mercy in their win over West at Alma Oval on Saturday. Reporter Joshua Mercer has this week's cricket wrap. North have booked their spot in the Barrier District Cricket League's grand final with a resounding win in A grade over the weekend. It was a hot day at Alma Oval and North were on fire from the outset. 
though opening batsman Riley Bomford was bowled out for four runs, fellow opener Edward Morgan had a field day, notching up half a century. Benjamin Jurd settled into a nice rhythm with Morgan, only to be caught by Daniel McInerney off the bowling of Paul Atard. With Tobias Hack and Jordan Vella only making single figures, Cody Howard stepped up to the crease and made 31 runs as the innings came to an end. The Robins bowled out for 67 runs while losing the minor premiership in the process. North bowlers Benjamin Jurd, Michael Molst and vice-captain Jordan Vella all taking three wickets each in the victory. In the other game, Central will take on West next weekend to see who will take on North in the grand final as they defeated South Broken Hill. In round 13 of Port Lincoln cricket, Southern Air South notched a run total of over 200 in their win over Wayback. Opener Liam O'Day hit 70 runs, while Tom Morgan was the next highest scorer with 39. Cooper Lewin took four wickets while Sam Lewis took three. In the other game, Tasman beat Todd River by eight wickets. James Stockham top scored with 27, while Marley Fazer was the next highest on 25. Moving over to Port Pirie now, and ladder leaders Props Panthers lost to Port Germain by three wickets. Zach Hutchinson, the standout with the bat for Port Germain, scoring 34 runs, while Simon George helped out with 24. Adam Rontanai was the star with the ball, taking five wickets for 29 runs. In the other game, the second place Rams beat Southport by five wickets. Andrew Congon leading his side to victory with 52 not out, while Steve Athenesis was the next highest with 46. In Port Augusta, Corn beat Triple C Tigers by 105 runs. Liam Bury, the star for Corn, hitting 85. Stephen Donald took three for 15 with the ball. South Augusta stay at the top of the table, beating West Augusta by one run. Middle order batsman Mark Benbow making 27 runs with the bat for South. Finally, over to Wyala, and in round seven, Central Wyala beat Rapina by 70 runs. Scott Collinson top scored for Central, while Bradley Smith took five wickets in the win. That ends Cricket Wrap for another week. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night for the rest of the region's sporting results. Stay with us after the break. Alex Sykes will join us with all the weather details, including what the rest of the region can expect from that incoming heat wave. Hello again. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Good evening, Alex. It's looking like a hot one. Good evening, John. It was a sizzling day in our northern areas of our region with temperatures nudging 40 degrees. And as you ha heard earlier, it's not going away anytime soon. Cooper PD hit 42 degrees today. Broken Hill, a warm 37. A little cooler in Port Lincoln, 28 the top there today. Looking more broadly at today's weather map now, and it was warm almost everywhere. 36 in Wyala, 40 in Port Piri. Woodner reached a scorching 42 degrees and Adelaide got to a top of 34. Taking a look at the satellite image now and cloud bubbling over the far west with a trough may bring some thunderstorms later. Cloud skimming the south coast with a weak trough and front is only bringing the odd light shower. Clearer skies elsewhere with a hot and dry air mass. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southerly winds between 15 to 25 knots, seas 1 to 1.5 metres and the swell is south to southwesterly at around a metre and there's a heatwave warning across the districts in our region. Dry on the Air Peninsula tomorrow with temperatures varying. Port Link in the region's coolest, a top of 28 and partly cloudy there. Cleve a little warmer, reaching a max of 34 degrees. And Woodner will once again be baking, the town expecting mostly sunny conditions and 43 degrees tomorrow. Further north now and it's looking like another warm and dry day. While a 36 and mostly sunny Port Augusta can expect another day above 40 degrees. And Kadena will be mostly sunny and 37. Port Pirie is set to be 40 degrees and mostly sunny. 
Clare slightly cooler. Those in the valley tomorrow can expect 36 and the Silver City will be sunny and a top of 39 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now and it's set to get even warmer on Wednesday. Cooper Pedy 41, 42 in Port Augusta, Whale and Kadena both 38 and sunny. Port Lincoln will hit the mid 30s reaching a top of 35. Woodnow, the region's warmest, 43 expected there. The Spencer Gulf can expect similar conditions on Thursday. Temperatures nudging 40 across most areas. Even Port Lincoln won't escape the heat, 41 expected there. Adelaide, 39. Broken Hill, 37. And Friday will be no different. Temperatures staying above 40 in northern areas. Port Pirie, 39. Kadena, Adelaide and Broken Hill, 38. There is some relief for Port Lincoln though. Showers and 30. 32 there. As you can see, John, this is a bit of a challenging week weather-wise, with the heat expected to have emergency services on notice. That's all the weather from me for tonight. It's back to you and nice to see you, John. It's looking like one of those weeks in the Spencer Gulf. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Monday evening. I'm John Hunt. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. I'll have updates a little later, but until then, enjoy your evening. From the team, it's good night.